Martin, thanks for speaking with us. You're general manager of Story Moja, but you're also a published author, which is an interesting one. How did you get published? What was that journey like? It, it takes a while. Um, I wrote a book. I mean, that's, that's probably um, the starting point. And what happens is once, once you write a book, a lot of others, they don't actually know what to do with it. Right. So what many will do is they'll do a lot of copies, uh, either e-copies or, you know, just the normal hard, hard copies. And then they'll send them to as many publishers as they, you know, as they can possibly find. And then, you know, follow up. It's almost like looking for a job. <laughs> You've got to send something and then you keep calling to us. In the hope that one of them likes it. Yes. Part of the problem is, I mean, when you are a writer, you don't really understand, you know, you kind of hate publishers because you're thinking, you know, I send them my manuscript, they haven't answered. But typically a publisher is, will receive, you know, literally, and I'm not making this up, hundreds of manuscripts per week. And a lot of them are in a state, and especially in this country where there are no literary agents, um, a lot of them will be in a state that you can't publish them. I mean, you can see some of them, there's a story, but they require so much editorial work that it doesn't make any financial sense. How many years ago was that? And would you say from then you've, you've made a sack load of money from having a book published? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, unless you're a Grisham or a J.K. Rowling, um, you will not you will not make millions out of writing. Um, and so are you saying that there's no Kenyan that can make millions of shillings out of writing? No, 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 I'm not saying there's no Kenyan who can make millions out of reading. I'm, I'm s out of writing. I'm saying it's not easy. Right. It's not easy. I mean, 99% of the writers who are published will not be millionaires out of their writing. And that's exactly where the problem is. Why is that? It's twofold. One, one is writing in itself i mean if you look at publishers non-curricular publishing um, on average a title will sell anywhere between 2,000 to 5,000 copies in its life cycle. Now, those are not dramatic amounts. If you think about what, and I'm talking about this market, if you think about, say, J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, even, the even before the book comes out, even before it, it actually hits the stores, the pre-orders, the people who said, I've bought the book and they've paid, but they haven't actually received the book, right. will run into hundreds of, you know, hundreds of thousands of copies. And so the sort of revenue that, say, J.K. Rowling or Grisham or any, you know, or Dan Brown or any of these uh, big writers will get is nothing, you know, is, is not anywhere near, you know, what your local publisher will get. So it's, it's a question of volume. Right. That's because the publishing cycle works. You didn't have any, a literary agent, for instance, to negotiate for you a huge deposit with your publisher before you've even written a word, and then thousands, perhaps millions of people um, pre-ordering your book. Yeah, but you see, the big, uh, the, big, um, the big deposit that you get from a publisher is also a function of what the publisher expects to make. Yes. In other words, if me as a publisher, I say, I want to publish your work, I'm taking a risk. I'm investing in your work in the hope that I can sell it. So why is there such a small market for books in Kenya? Why aren't people reading, say, South Africa has a much bigger market? Actually, it doesn't. Um, and, but but I'll, I'll give you the reasons for it. It's, it's twofold again. One of, the, one of the issues, one of the big issues is attitude. A lot of people, um, when they come out of school, they'll, um, there's, there's what they call an academic bonfire. Right, exactly, because when I was in high school and we finished high school, a lot of us burnt our books. Yes, and that's symbolic, because what books represent to a lot of people is chores, is work. Is People don't see books as a source of pleasure, uh, which is very different from the way books are perceived in other markets. And so therefore, when I become an adult, it's very unlikely that I will want to pick up a book or even walk into a bookshop unless I'm buying textbooks for my children. Because at that point, you have a choice not to read. You don't have an exam at the end of reading that book. Yes. Now, I mean, that's one. The other one, the, the other bit is also the publishers themselves um, have not focused a lot on non- curricular general reading because what has then happened is as a response to the fact that the market is very small well is dwindling was dwindling in the, through the 80s and the 90s a lot of the publishers switched resources from general reading to curricular books a lot of publishers don't put that much money into 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 non-curricular books and so what happens is it becomes a vicious cycle so you've got a dwindling market and you've got products that do not attract readers and so therefore it just makes the problem worse but you have to remind they don't publish co-curricular books you're not they're not meant for the education system no we don't why are you doing this it looks like you're a losing business <laughs> it's not a losing business <laughs> although sometimes it does feel like it all right but 
story model was founded on on that principle the fact that we have to do something about the reading culture and about the fact that kenyans don't read because it may not be noticeable but it does have an effect so we looked at what we were publishing and said can we can we publish can we do it in a different way so can we invest on say quality um quality editors uh so that we end up with books that um you know that are well edited are well laid out but even that even beyond that it's the core of the story we don't want to write books about the homo about you know the tortoise and the hay i mean they're great stories but let's write stories about matatus let's publish books in sheng which is more which is really what you know your typical young man in buruburu or jerry or jerusalem is he talks he talks in sheng you know he knows matatus he doesn't know tortoise and hares so let's 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 show them their world um and let's do it in ways that are much much better than what's currently done so we invest a lot on our illustrations for our children's books we look for stories that are contemporary stories that talk about today's Kenya and we market them in very different and funky ways